Masturbating with COVID is a-okay. Just make sure to stay hydrated and don't overexert yourself. Hey everyone, doctor's back. Oh, sorry. Let's put that right on your blood work. Hello there and welcome to Medical Mondays. I'm Dr. Watson. I'm a Gen Z doctor who says smart and dumb things pertaining to medicine. And today we're going to be reacting to Noel Miller since you guys seem to like the last one quite a bit. Knock, knock. How's it going? Hey, you look good. Okay, what brings you in? Um, let's see. Got some blood work. Nice. Just kidding, diabetic. That sucks, man. I don't get it. You look good. Good looking people can have diabetes too. How are you diabetic? That's weird. Got a weird body. Nick Jonas has type one diabetes. Can't afford the insulin. How about we figure out a plan to get your money up? Sorry to get serious for a moment, but the high cost of insulin is leading to unnecessary deaths and financial distress of diabetics who depend on it, especially in young patients with type 1 diabetes who cannot produce insulin on their own naturally and need insulin for their entire life. If they cannot afford their insurance deductibles or the out-of-pocket costs of insulin, they may go without insulin entirely or end up rationing what little insulin they do have and will likely go into diabetic ketoacidosis, which is very fatal if not emergently treated in hospital. Have you heard of drop shipping? That's what I'm going to prescribe. I'm going to prescribe you about like six months of drop shipping courses, um, provided the earth doesn't burn up in the next 10. But uh, yeah, let's get you on some drop shipping courses. Maybe get the, get the f bag, right? And then uh, insulin. Have at it. The cost of insulin is 10 times more in America than most countries, with one unit of insulin costing over $300. <laughs> is it normal for my eye to do this? I notice that my right eye drifts to the right whenever I focus on the stuff behind my phone. I'm not really sure why it's doing this. I've never noticed it before. What? Dude, if your vision is drifting, how do you know that your right eye is... That's crazy. It's just like, well, I can look at two things at once. You, you chameleon? That's... What he is describing as chameleon eyes is intermittent exotropia. It is the most common form of strabismus, aka lazy eye. It usually presents before the age of five, so this has probably been going on for over a decade, but because it happens randomly and often doesn't have noticeable symptoms or effect on vision, it can go unnoticed. The affected eye usually drifts when the person is looking far away, daydreaming, sick, tired, stressed, or under the influence of alcohol. I am not sure how he knows it happens whenever he looks past his phone maybe someone just pointed out to him or he snapped like an off-guard selfie we would say here at our practice that that's completely normal you're fun and unique and that's just a quirk about you but you're totally fine it seems pretty mild so i'm not sure if he cares to do anything about it but the treatment would depend on the case and can include eye exercises to strengthen the eye muscles corrective lenses putting an eye patch on the uninfected eye or surgery, but those usually have to be redone a lot and I don't really think it's worth it a lot of times. How do I accept that I'm going to die no matter what? Up to you, man. <laughs> this is a teenager. He says no health conditions, severe fear of death. Coming to terms with inevitable death can be very difficult. I think the best advice for that that I've ever heard is actually from one of my good friends I grew up with, his name's Paul. We talked about death and I told him I was scared about death and he goes, why? You're not going to know when it happens. And I thought, F that is really smart. It's true, you know? You're just, I'm having such a good time. Hello, Noel. <laughs> I had a similar moment when I was 13 and freaking out about my mortality. It started as a fun conversation about ghosts and transitioned into me spiraling. My friend said, thinking about it won't change anything, so what's the point? Anxiety of the unknown makes sense, but thinking about death won't change what happens after, in my opinion. It is an interesting thing. Uh, what age were you guys when you r realized your mortality? How old were you? Seven. Seven? Yeah, seven. Yeah. That seems about to be the age. What'd you do? Did you were you scared? Did you cry? Probably cried in bed by myself. I stared at my grandfather being buried mm. and had a mental breakdown. When we put our elders in the earth, that is a funny moment as a kid when you see that happen and you go, "Oh wait, f no! Oh, that's how this ends! Oh, fuck. I thought I was just gonna eat fucking string cheese forever, you know? And then you realize." I'm that? Oh, in how long? And then everyone who's older than you goes, I don't know. Sometimes you have old people that'd be like, that'd be you before you know it. <laughs> 
you know, and then you pull out a big old axe and you're like, ah! just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Kill your whole family at your grandpa's funeral. <laughs> That's a f- reason to not teach kids about heaven early. Imagine a nine-year-old just killing his whole family and then looking to the cops and he's like, I just didn't want to be alone when I died. They're like, oh, God. I just try to be a good person and have good times in the meantime. A lot of my fear of death was actually removed whenever I worked in a nursing home and saw how content the residents were with their lives and how they felt like they were ready for whatever's next. Hold on, gang. We got uh, we got a patient here who needs immediate care. 20 male hit my tibia bone with an axe. Is it going to heal without medical attention from doctors? I hope you have all your shots. So I hit the lower part of my tibia bone with an axe by accident while splitting wood. I'm not 100% sure that's how it's called, so I will attach a picture. It doesn't hurt that bad, but I'm concerned if it's going to heal all right without a cast. I don't want a cast since I need to be mobile. It seems that I have a dent in it. Avoiding a cast for a dent in your leg after a self-inflicted axe swing because you're worried about mobility is not the greatest idea. If you aren't getting it checked out by a doctor because you're worried about them sticking you in a cast, you can always refuse it. Some casts will not really impede your daily activities that much anyways, even in a leg. And uh, there's a picture. Thank God he gave that. That's what I want to look at as a doctor. I want to walk in and just see blood and gore. Have some fun. A little bit of courtesy, guy. Love this top comment. Yeah, that totally needs stitches. <laughs> <laughs> Props to this guy to just swing an axe, split, and just completely miss the wood and just hit his tibia with a hard blade and then go, I don't really want to wear a cast, though. Like, I definitely have shit to do. Honestly, dude, this guy's saying he needs stitches. I'm saying do what you want. It's fine. You got a couple socks, just wear two socks on that side. Ironically, by trying to stay mobile, you may be risking permanent deformities that affect mobility. The dent can be from the bone, a severed muscle or tendon, or a fluid buildup. I don't see the picture of the leg, so I really have no clue which one it is. The injury may need surgery, but the surgery may prevent permanent issues or further damage. If it is a partial fracture, not treating it and continuing to use the leg can lead to a complete fracture, which is way more serious. Also, even though you clean the wound, it is a good idea to get it looked at by a healthcare professional. A deep injury like that can cause a serious infection. Guys, stop the press. We got it. We got a serious ER situation here. Okay. I just hit my head and clear fluid started pouring out from my left nostril. It stopped after a few seconds. Am I okay? No. Clear fluid from the nose after a head injury is likely cerebrospinal fluid or CSF rhinorrhea. There are two ways to tell if it is CSF. The fluid from the nose does not stiffen on a tissue after it dries, like mucus would. It occurs when leaning forward or looking down rather than a continuous leak from the nose or a runny nose. I was playing with our dogs and our skulls collided. I was already on the floor and I laid my head down when I sat up. This snot or something poured like water out of my left nostril. I haven't been stuffy and my eyes were not watering. What is going on? The collision from the doggo likely created a small leak of the fluid around the brain. Uh, <laughs> I'm laughing at the sheer seriousness of what has just happened. If you ever have head trauma, um, and I know this because uh, I had experience that was similar but not as serious. If you ever have head trauma and clear comes out of your head, if and Pepsi Crystal comes out of your head, that's typically spinal fluid. <laughs> You'll know it, okay? It doesn't come out like mucus. It looks like water. Like you just look over and it's just like, and it's the most innocuous thing. It just happens for a second. And you go, well, hey, and then it stops and you're like, oh, I feel fine. Your head is broken. A severe head injury with CSF rhinorrhea can show battle sign or raccoon's eyes, which indicates a basal skull fracture. Literally, your skull is up a disc between your vertebrae something go to the doctor immediately it can be scarier than it sounds if it stops on its own and not a lot of volume has been lost then the leak will probably heal itself very quickly now why do i know this because i was sick for a while and then i had a similar experience i was standing over the sink washing my hands and just a clear line of yellow fluid just exited my head i think i was supposed to go perform in like 24 hours or something i was supposed to take a flight to like go do a show and so i'm kind of freaking out so i get on a like a virtual urgent care and i'm describing the situation to someone who's basically just you know they got like a, a background kind of like this but it's just like you know the medical office and they're clearly set up in some garage the dude's got a headset on and he's like okay what seems to be the issue i'm like uh i think i'm leaking spinal fluid out of my head this dude gave a f he was just i get on with a doctor i tell him the situation he looks at me and he goes, oh, uh, okay. 
And you're sure you didn't hit your head. He starts grilling me. He makes this implication that I'm that I'm like a drunk. He's like, you know, we weren't like drinking and you like fell down. Maybe got into a fight. When I told him, no, I didn't drink or fall down or get in a fight. He kept egging it on. He's like, you're sure. You're sure. It's okay. You're sure. I'm like, I'm not lying. He says, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. He's like almost gaslighting me into believing that I got into a fight. He goes, well, you got my email if it acts up. And for the next, you know, 48 hours, I was panicked. It ended up that I just had a bunch of boogers in my head. Long way of saying, you know, if you got clear liquid coming out of your brain uh, or out of your nose, just be careful. It's kind of- it could be that Noel experiences because CSF rhinorrhea can occur spontaneously or after coughing and sneezing, which he probably did a lot of while he was sick. Possible symptoms of CSF loss include dizziness, headache, vision changes, and nausea. And severe CSF loss is rare but can lead to compression of the brain and structures. Treatment for a minor leak like they described is to lay down, drink water, and take in over the counter medication like a pain medication if needed for the headaches kind of a serious episode isn't it let's lighten the mood doctor recommended jesus christ as a remedy for depression this seems fun <laughs> now before i read this story sorry i'm just picturing someone really emptying their heart out to a doctor and instead of medicine he goes have you tried god you know as the title states went to see the doc for a regular checkup nurse asked about depression during intake told her I was a teacher and this was a really tough year. I told her I was experiencing symptoms of depression. Doctor comes in and does his checkup, asks if I am a man of faith. I told him I'm agnostic. The doctor replied, that's great that you have a connection to the church. Well, I personally feel that we can't feel our true purpose in our lives unless we accept that Jesus Christ is most important and comes first. Honestly, it made me kind of uncomfortable. Does this cross any ethical boundaries at all? Should I be looking for a new PCP? Yeah. I don't know what kind of PCP makes you responsible. The only PCP we know is the one that makes you like walk naked down the street, you know, requires like 10 cops to bring you back to normal, you know. Sir, please exit the mall. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, get off the merry-go-round. Butt-ass naked trying to f fight that horse on the merry-go-round. Damn, that doctor just doesn't give a f there's people that love JC everywhere. JC got fans worldwide. I was initially going to start to blame like, ah, maybe there's a doctor in the Bible belt. But this is proof that you know, nine in 10 doctors are full of shit. <laughs> That is so wrong. A doctor should never impose their beliefs on you. Absolutely change your PCP. I guess depression is one of those, right? It's an objective topic for some people. You know, you're sad. Are you sure? Um, but to this man, you know, I think we'd all say, yeah, get, a, get, a new, get a new PCP, as they call him. Wallet sucker. That's what we call him in the biz. Right. There is a standard protocol to screen for depression, and it seems like he completely bypassed that and went straight to religion, which is not only negligent, but dangerous in someone who is experiencing severe depression. Uh, here we go. Is it okay to rub one out during COVID? Masturbating with COVID is A-OK. -okay. Just make sure to stay hydrated and don't overexert yourself. You never rubbed one out during the flu? You never had a 103 fever beat? You know, you're like, well, fuck it, if I'm a go, might as well drain it all. You know, it's funny to interpret that one as if he doesn't have COVID and <laughs> just during the pandemic. Is it OK to jerk off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that would have been a good joke like three years ago. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're not in a pandemic anymore. Doctor says COVID's over. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Comment down below any other YouTubers you'd like me to react to, any questions you might have, or if you've experienced anything I discussed in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Click the bell notification so that you never miss a video. Follow me on all social media platforms at Dr. K Watson. I have a Google form in the description to request topics to discuss in future videos down below. I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Good to see you as always. Really appreciate you making me drive out for this one. Um, my nurse will be in here. She'll run your pockets and then we'll talk soon. Okay.